Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope you are ready for our big rematch against Colrus. Once again, we will board the Plasma Frigate, and I think he was this way. I probably should remember this, but I did train up our team to level 74, and I think we're going to try leading with Asper this time, since we will resist minus 10's electric attacks, and we can also retaliate with a super effective high jump kick. Head over this way. And I assume he'll battle us again since we lost. I'm not sure if he's an everyday opponent or not. Uh, no repel is necessary. Yep, okay, good. Same text. Alright, round two. Here we go. So we're still under leveled for sure, but I think with uh, one more level and a little bit of different strategy, we have a pretty good shot. In fact, I say at this point, my Prediction would be 50-50 chance of either of us winning, which should make for a very good battle either way. And of course it's Magneton, we're leading with Asper, and we are going to go right for Jump Kick. Also I put um, Flo, our Seismitoad, in the back spot of the party, which means when we bring out um, when we bring out Nim, we'll be disguised as a Seismitoad this time, which could be useful in avoiding some strong electric attacks, and steel attacks too, presumably. Alright, so we are paralyzed. I'm going to go for another jump kick, though. And Magneton is very wisely going to go for Flash Cannon, which is evenly effective. So we'll be fully paralyzed. We are fully paralyzed. That's unfortunate. Um, there's probably not a lot of reason to switch out Asper. Um, I could bring in Vasa, but I want to keep Vasa's health as high as possible. Um, occasionally it makes sense to keep a Pokemon who's paralyzed and low health alive just so you can switch them in for a free switch later on but I think I'd rather use my free switch in now and okay here's the question is do I use Nim right away or do I keep Nim as a secret weapon let's bring in Russ actually I was thinking about leading with Russ but then I was like Magneton I think can learn sturdy so or can have the ability sturdy so I didn't want to use Earthquake get it to 1 HP and then have it use like Volt Switch or Thunderbolt against Russ which would be super effective of course all right, there we go. And Rotom, okay, that's a, a good choice there. A water and electric type against a rock and flying type. Um, you know what? I'm very tempted to U-turn. But let's use Earthquake for some super effective damage. Oh, it has Levitate. Of course it has Levitate. As soon as I clicked that, I knew that. Oh, that was a... I should have used U-turn. I should have just got out of there. And, but I was thinking, oh, it's water and electric. It's weak to, to uh, Earthquake. Oh, that could have cost us the battle right there. That's unfortunate. Okay, well, and I wish I had Asper now because that would be a great choice to use against Rotom. It's weak to um, grass and with Levitate, that's it, just grass. Hmm, okay, well, that's not great. Um, who do I want to bring out now? All right, let's go ahead and bring out Ulton. Hope we don't have like Ice Beam or something like that. Yeah, when I was re-strategizing, I wasn't really thinking about Rotom. I probably should have saved Asper for, for them. Um, I want to really take this thing down, so let's use Earthquake and see if we can knock it out in one hit. We are faster, that's good news. We do have the Dragon Fang. Will it be enough? It will. Okay, good. And a little more XP there. And Magnazone, a good switch in, because we are locked into Outrage, unfortunately. We will at least uh, break it sturdy. If it does indeed have sturdy. But it won't do. Uh, do more damage than I thought. Thunder Wave is a good choice. That will slow us down. And we are locked into a third turn of Outrage, which probably doesn't matter too much. Uh, I guess if we weren't, we could try to go for Earthquake. So actually, maybe it matters a lot, because that would be nice to have an Earthquake, which would finish off Magnazone. But even so, its HP will be pretty low now. All right, so I'm expecting a full restore. I'm more confused and paralyzed. That's that's really annoying. Um, but who would I bring in against the full restore? Hmm. My gut says boss. I'm just. I'm, I probably should look up the head sturdy. But uh, all right, let's go for earthquake. We'll roll the dice here, see what happens. 
We do have at least a small chance of landing this hit. And we do! Elton coming through for us. All right. Ooh, good job. Now, does it have sturdy, or will this be a one-hit knockout? It is a one-hit knockout. Okay, I was being a little bit... A little bit sturdy phobic there, I guess. Level 75, our new highest level. And Kling Lang. All right, now, unfortunately, he's probably going to use this as a... Um, as a free turn. No, he's not. I thought he was going to use his uh, gear shift again. But I guess it makes sense he'd want to knock us out as soon as possible. I'm not sure why he didn't use, like, flash cannon or something or gear grind. So, okay, so we now have a turn, a free setup turn here. But there's still Behemoth with Energy Ball in the back. Um, I'm definitely worried about that. So... Okay, so we have Behem and we have Metagross. Let's switch in Basa. So now it's 3v3, I think, right? Yep, we're all tied up. Um, does have Air Balloons. Let's go for Flare Blitz. That will knock it out, but it's going to do a lot of damage and recoil. Which means if he brings in Metagross next. I guess the good news is he can't use Agility. Trying to brainstorm some ideas here. He does have BHM in. BHM is probably going to knock us out with a powerful like psychic attack. Um, I could switch in Nim to that, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to take more than one psychic attack. I, just, I still feel like that's cheating. Um, all right, let's stay in, and we will go for another flare blitz. And we're faster. Okay. I guess BM is pretty slow. I kind of forgot about that. So I don't know if it'll be a knockout, but it'll be a lot of damage. Not quite a knockout. Those two levels may have made the difference there. And there comes the Psychic. All right. But the good news is, is we now can bring in Nim, and we still have our Disguise up and running. And I guess my first question is going to be, is it... Um, Will Flamethrower be enough? Uh, but Night Thieves has that small chance of missing. I'm pretty sure Flamethrower will be enough. We're, we're a pretty strong Pokemon. Yes, okay. And there's Metagross. Now at this point, any smart trainer should realize that we are not a, a Seismitoad, because why would a Seismitoad use Flamethrower? Um, in fact, we're going to stick with Flamethrower because it's super effective. And we'll see if Metagross uses Zen Head, but it might use like Giga Impact or something. We'll see what it has. Agility, okay. If, if I believe more, could I have drawn out my Pokemon's power? And this is his last one, so he will be faster now. The question is, what is he going to do against us? Um, see, this permit that wants to like play this fair and wants to like, I'm worried he's going to use like a, a Zen headbutt, which is probably what I would do. In which case, I feel so weird like winning off of the, the AI being extra stupid. Um, but let's go for it. He did indeed go for Zen headbutt. Now I can say he was just um, being stupid there and didn't connect the dots that, you know, maybe he didn't know that Seismito can't learn Flamethrower, which I guess is probably viable, but I really wish the AI would make the mistake once and then not just repeatedly make that mistake. Because I feel like we only won that um, because of that that bad AI programming. Alright. Oh, and we have the Master Ball. That's cool. I didn't realize... Do we not already have a Master Ball? I thought we already had a Master Ball. Oh, okay. And he uh, will battle us again. So maybe I'll try this again with a different strategy tomorrow. Um, so think that through, if I had brought in Flow, we would have taken a Zen Headbutt and then probably a second Zen head button, and we would have had to bring in Nim as Nim, or as a uh, Zoroark. In which case, he could have gone for the Meteor Mash, which probably would have been a knockout. So I, I just feel like if he was smarter, he would have beat us there. Um, but what we'll do, I think we'll come back and face him one more time. Maybe when we're at the same level, and then we can kind of really do it, you know, fair on fair. But for now, let's try to get out of here. And I guess the downside about winning is that now I have to run all the way back. Didn't think about that part. All right, well, 
Yeah, I can't use an escape rope here, I assume. I'll give it a try. Oh, we can. But is it going to take us back to just like the uh, the dock of the ship? It is. All right. Well, a little disappointing. Um, and we'll use another repel in a second. I would teach fly to to our Archaeops, to Russ, but um, I guess I do have enough heart skills. I probably could get acrobatics back. So, all right. You know what? I will save you guys the trouble and we'll just teach fly. I can find it because that's probably quicker than me having to go all the way back to this route again um, at least you don't need strength I did I did look at that and Russ has fainted but thankfully can still use HM moves out of battle oh you know what I don't have to get rid of acrobatics just occurred to me I can get rid of like earthquakes so let's do that then that'll save me the trouble going to the move tutor using a hard scale or the move relearner although that being said I have to go back there anyway because uh that's also where the mood leader is for fly, but I'll worry about that later. For now, um, all right, let's go back to the dream yard there, because I did read that Latios actually does want you to follow him, and you apparently can encounter Latios, so that'd be kind of cool. So we'll do that, and then I think there's some more areas we can go to to train up our Pokemon a little higher level, as we prepare for both the Pokemon World Tournament and some more really tough battles. Yes, please heal my Pokemon. Thank you, thank you. So we do have, um, I think, two more battles to do before we face the Pokemon League. And I think the trainers, their Pokemon are level 78 and up, which is really high. But I feel like they probably have weaker Pokemon than um, than Colrus did. He actually had a pretty good team with like a Magnezone and a Metagross. Okay, there's Latios. I... I'm surprised because I thought we'd already done this I and mean, we had already done this clearly. But does this mean I have to use cut all over again? Maybe not. Yeah, probably so. <sighs> That's really... F and Oh, we missed an item. Okay, I'll have to get that too. It's really frustrating because it's just it's very annoying going back to the Pokemon World Tournament, deleting an HM move, teaching them that we want them to learn. It, it's just a real pain. So I'm definitely glad they got rid of the HM moves after this generation. Um... All right, so once again, we'll teach Cut to Alton. And we will temporarily get rid of Earthquake. Hopefully don't need that. But I did think it would at least be cool to uh, encounter Latios on screen. Not sure we'll catch it. Again, we'll see if it gets to be like really low in HP. Maybe we'll give it a shot. But um, otherwise, I'll probably just knock it out and be sad. But... Like I said, this is not a uh, catching all the legendaries. Let's play. There's another one of those like oven-looking things. So I guess it's not like a special area in the back there. And we need to go this way, and we also need to grab this hidden item. Oh, Dream Eater! A very appropriate item to find in the Dream Yard. Okay, and Latios is over on the left now. And then we see him over here. And he goes to the right. So we'll head over this way. Oh. oh. Maybe that was all I had to do last time to encounter him. Okay, well, opportunity missed. I thought he was gonna like go back down underground. We had to like walk around in there. Okay, 68, pretty good level. Uh, let's go for Megahorn, though. It is super effective. This might honestly be a one-hit knockout, so this might be, like, the shortest legendary battle ever, but we'll see. Wow, okay. Well, a promise is a promise. He did hang on with just a little bit of HP, and that's, like, perfect, so... Um, okay, you know what I'm going to do now? Ironically, this wild Pokemon is going to be smarter than uh, the AI was, because it might just randomly use a move that's not a psychic attack, but in case it does... Perfect, okay. Because I want to keep Asper alive because I don't want our friendship to go down. Otherwise, that'll... Um... Hope we have no more Quick Balls, I don't think, do we? Nope, I guess not. You know, honestly, with two Master Balls, I probably should use one of those, but... All right, I'm going to do kind of what I did last time. I'll use five Ultra Balls, and then we'll just call it a day. 
And I'm worried he has like recover or something like that. So that would be definitely very frustrating if it uses that. But as long as it stays at like one HP, and um, as long as we don't use too many Ultra Balls, I'll keep going. This is number three. Dragon Dance increases its physical attack, so I'm not as worried about that. I'm not sure if it even has any physical attacks, but I guess we'll find out. For now, we're kind of safe just using Psychic a bunch. All right, I guess what I'll do is I'll keep using these until I see its entire move pool. Because we know three of its moves now, Psychic, Dragon Dance, and Heal Pulse. So there's one more I could use. It's probably like Dragon Breath or something. It really wants to use Heal Pulse to heal my Pokemon. It's very kind of it, but uh, not really what I need. Dragon Dance. Also, I think if you do knock it out, you can always come back here every time you beat the Pokemon League, it resets. I know the first time you beat the Pokemon League, it does reset it. And you can come back and try again. Well, wait a minute. It doesn't make sense. You can't get here until you beat the Pokemon League. So it must mean that... Every time you beat the Pokemon League, Latios will respawn, unless you catch it. Alright, come on, Latios. Did I see the fourth move and just miss it, or is it really fixated on Heal Pulse? And... Ah, uh, right at the end. Psycho Shift is the last one. Okay. Three more, and that's all I'm doing. After these three... We're running, or we're not going to run, we'll defeat it. Because I don't want to stay here throwing Ultra Balls all day, and I'm sure that's not the most entertaining video either. But yeah, it is funny that all these Dragon Dances, and it really can't make use of them, because its only attack that does damage is, um, is Psychic. So either Dark type definitely can make this a little easier. Alright, one more for all the marbles. Can we catch Latios? One shake. Up, oh, and that's all we got. Okay. Alright, well, if you don't like seeing legendaries get knocked out and hurt your heart, then uh, close your eyes. Like, I'll say this if it dodges this night phase, I'll do three more throws. It did not, and therefore down goes Latius. I gave it a shot. And we got some XP at least. And what is this? Oh, the Soul Dew, okay. That's an item that actually powers up Latios if you let one hold it. Okay, well, part of the good news is we do have Fly now. So I think, where should we go to next? We've done the P2 base. Let's go ahead and check out Nimbasa City and the upgraded um, big court and, uh, or big stadium and small court. And then I think the only other place we have to chain, train up is the Royal Unova. So we'll heal up. Um, we'll stick with the moves we have for now. But I do need to remember to switch them back before we um, move on to the next Tough Trainers. So I think right now we're kind of getting close to the end of the game. But we still actually have a decent chunk of stuff to go. And it should be some pretty exciting stuff. Um, my plan is going to be, I think, get a Pokemon to level like 76 or so. Do one more fight against Colt Risk. I still don't feel like that was a clean win. I, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right abusing the AI like that. I will start the big stadium first. Why not? Um, and then once we do that, we'll head straight to the other two trainers who are level 78 and up, but I still think it'll be easier. I see some uh, double battlers perhaps over there. All right, Asper and Russ. Um, actually, I'm going to bring out, like, let's do Basa and Russ. Because then we could potentially Earthquake, we could just single target. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully these are actually double battlers, not just two people standing next to each other. Alright, good they are. Backers Amy and Ira, and I do see two other people standing next to each other too, so we'll see how that goes. And their Pokemon are a little bit lower level, since I guess you can face these guys anytime you beat the Pokemon League. Or anytime as soon as you beat the Pokemon League, but... All right, uh, this could be bad. Let's use, um, all right, let's use Earthquake. 
And I'm going to try to use Acrobatics and take out Simipore right away. Because if I don't take out Simipore, it could use like Surf or Hydro Pump and do a lot of damage to Bustle. All right. Good job, Russ. Quite the team player. And Earthquake should finish up Simiseer. Two good team players there. Only one Pokemon each, but luckily you can defeat these guys or can battle these guys once a day. So if I need to get some more levels off screen, I can definitely do that pretty easily. And I'm pretty sure that the uh, Royal Unova is also able to be battled every day. Well, not the ship, but the people on the ship. All right, a Simi Sage and a Bisharp. Let's do... Let's stick with Earthquake. Because it's fun, and Acrobatics on Simi Sage should be an easy knockout. Could use Super Power against Bisharp, honestly, but I think either move will do the trick here. And level 75. Good job, Basa. That's two 75s. And on goes Bisharp. Elf and Fred. I wonder if that's like a pun on Alfred. I should have looked at these two backers' names to see if they were also a pun. Alright, let's switch out to Asper next. Give him some more XP, and we'll start on the right side and kind of just work our way over. Hopefully these guys will have some cool Pokemon to face. Dancer, Davy, and a Mr. Mai. It'd be cool to see if these are the same Pokemon they had before, just higher level and evolved. Or are these actually new Pokemon? And we'll use Megahorn, it's super effective. Honestly, being level levels higher, we might be able to knock on Mr. Mime with return, but we'll play it safe. And another Mr. Mime. All right, well, for science, then, we'll mix things up and try return. It is a knockout, okay. Good to know. I lost against you too quickly. You know what? I'm kind of okay with that, because, uh, got plenty more trainers to face. And I like how the, um, the players give you a ball as a reward that makes kind of too much sense. Infielder Todd and a Cubone. It's also possible that these guys just have the same Pokemon but higher levels. Maybe I'll look that up too. If you saw a, keyboard, or a cursor sneak across the screen there, one good eyes. Um, that's me just making a note on my other monitor to check on that later. All right, jump kick should be super effective. In fact, four times super effective. So thankfully, it didn't miss this time. And down goes Bisharp. And there goes infielder Todd. And an iron. Again, can't really use that, but I do appreciate that. Give me some vitamins there. She's an ace trainer, but wants to be an ordinary girl. Yeah, everybody can't be on their best all the time. It's time she's going to relax and enjoy the show. She's got three Pokemon, hopefully some good ones. Starting with a Jinx. That's a cool Gen 1 Pokemon that I haven't seen in a while. A Ice and Psychic type that is actually surprisingly fast and powerful. It's very weak defensively, but has a good special attack and speed stat. Uh, it is weak to Megahorn. But I'm going to use Return because it should be enough to knock out Jinx one hit. I don't want to risk like a Blizzard in Return if I miss that Mega Horn. So as much as I love seeing the It's Super Effective text on screen, we'll go with the safe play here. Hey, Vaporeon. Another very cool evolution. Glad to see this Ace Trainer has a pretty exciting team. Horn Leech, though, will be super effective. And on goes Vaporeon. Level 75, racking up the XP. Aerodactyl, another Pokemon. Aerodactyl is incredibly fast. So we'll see if it's faster even being 10 levels lower. Um, and I guess Horn Leech is probably our best bet here. We are faster, good job, Asper. Will it be enough? Not quite. Oh, okay, this is an interesting move. So it's kind of like Fly, 
It's a two turn flying attack, but we can't switch because we are up in the air, so we can't really do anything. Um, except wait for Sky Drop to hit. And I wonder if Sky Drop, I guess it didn't actually say our move did nothing, but I guess because we were up in the air, it, it couldn't do anything. All right, let's get a little bit of HP back here. Thankfully, Sky Drop is not the strongest attack. Air Dactyl has a decent attack stat. Actually, I think a pretty good attack stat, but it doesn't have the best move pool to use it. So I haven't trained one in a very, very long time. I think this is my very first Leaf Green game, like back, way back in the day. Oh, a PP up, okay. I'm not sure who would even use that on at this point. Let's not bother. Let's just use a uh, potion and we'll keep on battling. I don't think we're really in any danger of running out. Alright, and we will keep things mixed up. Let's switch out to Nim. And we'll leave our flow disguise for a little bit, just for something a little different. I've practiced and practiced and become a great player. Now let's play ball. Well, he might be a great player, but is he a great Pokemon trainer? Only one way to find out. He's got two Pokemon. That's funny because I work with both a Todd and a Connor, so apparently all my uh, business contacts are here at the Pokemon ball game. All right, Unpheasant. We've seen plenty of those before. Normal and flying type. We'll go for a Night Days. There we go. Down goes on Pheasant. And another Pokemon added to the level 75 list. It's definitely much, much faster getting XP from Trainer Battles than it is facing wild Pokemon. All right, Crocodile. This is a perfect opportunity to use Focus Blast. In fact, this is one of the Pokemon that we have Focus Blast for. So let's see how much it does. Quite a lot is the answer. No surprise there. Zorark is a pretty strong Pokemon, and Focus Blast is a very strong move. Lots of gifts here. This is a good place just to farm for money, too, if you get, like, irons and things to sell. Alright, but we'll keep mixing things up. Let's bring Rust to the forefront and take on this ball player. The strongest, he says. There's a veteran standing right there, so I kind of doubt that, but let's see their Pokemon and judge for ourselves. Simapore. All right, a decent start. A lot of uh, Simi Pokemon in this this uh, area. A little repetitive, but what can you do? Acrobatics, I would think, would be a knockout since we are faster, and Simapore is not the best defensively. And Simisage. Oh, is he going to have just all three Simi Pokemon? I mean, it's actually that's a pretty strong team. Um, it would be cool to train all three of them in a in a let's play. And see how that does. They are, um, like I said, they're very fragile. So as long as you're faster and get some good attack offs, you can do some damage. But you really can't take a hit in return. And while they're strong, I'm not sure they're really strong enough to like get guaranteed one-hit knockouts in a lot of Pokemon. I use damage for fun. So I really feel like they're kind of hit or miss Pokemon. Probably fun to use, but not like super duper strong. All right, and we will just keep rotating. Another iron. Wow, we're going to have so many vitamins after this. Oh, not fly. I'm used to not having fly now. And we'll bring out flow. And let me just check and see if this person is on the field or not. No, they're not. Okay, so the last trainer is you. Wow, you have a lot of badges. Let me see your skills. Happy to show off. And veteran Sayuri. Oh, I know a Siri. With a Relicanth. A Water and Rock type. Okay, interesting. And I think Relicanth can also have Swift Swim, so we won't bother with that. We'll go straight for the Earthquake. Super effective, but not a knockout. Relicanth probably has pretty good defenses. But I think one more Earthquake should do the trick. I wonder how much a Surf would have done. I'll have to do that on our rematch, because um, it might have a lower special defense, even though it's not weak to Surf. Glaceon, another cool Pokemon. All right, so Glaceon is a Ice and... Or a pure Ice type, rather. Um, I don't know. I feel like it has a better 
special defense step, but I really can't remember at this point, so let's just try Earthquake and see what it does. Okay, Earthquake would not be a 2 at Knockout. Maybe it has a better defense stat, actually. But I know Leafeon has a good defense stat, so I'd be surprised if they both do. However, there are 7 evolutions and only 6 stats, so two of them have to share the highest attack stat. Well, it definitely seemed like either it was... Oh, Dragonite, that's cool. My favorite Pokemon. Either it was equal or... Um, or had a lower special defense stat. Okay, so Dragonite is another Pokemon where it'd be really nice to have a ice attack, but we don't. So let's go for Sledge Wave and see how much that does. Not a lot. And we know firsthand how powerful an Outreach could be. I guess I'm lucky that I didn't use a Dragon Dance, but it is very cool to see a, a um, Dragon Knight in this game. All right, let's bring out our own Dragon type because we should be faster. And as much as I hate to knock out my favorite Pokemon, for this playthrough, these six are my favorite, so gotta do what you gotta do. Good night, Dragonite. Oh, she has four? Why did I think she had three? Alright, well, we're locked into Outrage, but that's okay. My cargo would have been super weak to Earthquake, although we don't have Earthquake, so I guess we could use Superpower. But Outrage is still more than enough damage. That fighting style reminds me of the old days. Or was it Glaceon? Who's before Glaceon? Maybe it was just Glaceon, um, Dragonite, and Mag Cargo. And another PP Max. I'll hold to that one in case we need it for anything. But all right, that is the big stadium. I'm going to take a little break and uh, heal up our Pokemon. And then when we come back, we will face the small court. And then maybe we'll sneak in some, uh, some fun battles after that. So that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Keep being awesome, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.